Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 2000 PLC web server HTTP. The Productivity series of PLCs has a built-in web server. This web server function can make a non-secure HTTP connection to the CPU. This is done with your browser. You can view read-only system tags and open, save, or delete files stored on your micro SD drive. Previously, we stored data logged files on the USB micro SD storage device. We will now start and configure the web server function. Look at the files from our data logger and view the system files available. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. Productivity Web Server Configuration Ensure that you are online with the PLC. Under Setup in the Application Tools menu, select Hardware Configure. You can also use the main menu, Setup, Hardware Config. Double click on the CPU module will bring up the CPU module window. This has four tabs along the top. Options, Ethernet Port, remote access, and serial ports. Configuration of the web server is done here. Select the Ethernet tab port. Under the TCP IP settings, we want to set our address for the PLC. This will ensure that the settings will not be changed when accessing the web server. Select the Show Current Settings button. Note the settings and select OK. Select the Use the following radio button and enter the settings. Select the Remote Access tab. Select the Web Server Function button. We will leave the default port as 80. Port 80 is the port number assigned to the commonly used Internet Communication Protocol Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP. I would suggest turning on the session timeout if this was on a network. This will automatically log the user out after a set amount of minutes. Select the password option. The account name in our example is ACC and the password is ACC. Select OK once you have entered the information. Since we have changed the configuration of the CPU, we perform a program transfer. This is a stop mode transfer because of the configuration change. Once the information is transferred, the PLC can now be put into run mode. Our web server should now be available through our browser. Running the Productivity Web Server. Start your browser. In our case, this is Google Chrome. Enter the IP address of the web server. In our case, it's 192.168.1.140. This should automatically show you the login screen. Enter the credentials we have configured for our example. Press the login button. We will now see all of the options on our main index page. The first one is the home. This is the page that we now see. ADC, this is a link that will open the Automation Direct website. Logout, this will log you out of the web server. Help, this is a link that will open the Productivity 2000 user manual online. Download files, this will allow you to open, save, or delete files on the micro SD card. System data, this is a read only of the system data in the PLC. Select the download files, Productivity web server. Selecting the download files will open the, uh, the web page. Here you can click on the file to download it to your computer. Once downloaded, you can call it up in Notepad or a spreadsheet program like Excel to read the contents. The garbage can icon to the right of the file will delete the file off the micro SD card. The system data. When a system data page is displayed, you can choose several read-only memory information with the PLC. 
run stop. This is, shows the current status of the PLC. Various. This will show forces, IO read, watchdog time, watchdog timeout, portable memory device ready, portable memory device eject. Battery. Information on the battery in the PLC. CPU and project. Information on the CPU, firmware, current program file name, program memory size, and ethernet speeds. Scan. This will give you the various information on the PLC scan. IO configure. This will indicate if you have errors in the input or output configuration. Array error. This will show errors associated with arrays. Time, current real time clock in the PLC. Event, this events in the PLC, like stop, run, and new programs transferred. Critical errors, current and previous critical errors that would stop the scan of the PLC. Non-critical errors current and previous non-critical errors that would give an alarm on the PLC. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.